Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, today's video is going to focus on a few books that have um, very strong women characters that I have fallen in love with over the years, from books that I read in high school to books that I just read in the last couple of years. I got a request on Twitter to do a video about spinster books and old women that I have uh, love in novels, but I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit and just talk about women in novels that I really love and writers that have really moved me and changed the way I am as a reader. So I hope you like it. I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. So the first book I want to talk to you about is a book called Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Now I originally read this book in 11th grade and I have gone back to it so many times and I normally don't do this to you guys but I'm actually going to read part of the book to you because I think the first bit of it may be some of the most beautiful writing that I have ever read in my entire life. So chapter one, ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. For some they come in with the tide, for others they sail forever on the horizon, never out of sight never landing until the watcher turns his eyes away in resignation, his dreams mocked to death by time. This is the life of men. Now women forget all those things they don't want to remember and remember everything they don't want to forget. The dream is the truth. Then they act and do things accordingly. Now, Zora Neale Hurston has a very, very interesting life, if you guys haven't read anything by her. She was born in a town in Florida that was one of the first towns that was all completely um, African American. And she went on to become an anthropologist. So a lot of her books have to do with anthropology. But their eyes um, were watching God as the story of Janie. Janie is a very, very strong female who, at the beginning of the book, thinks she's met the man of her dreams and she marries him. And it's about their relationship and how that forms her until she meets Tea Cake, who turns out to be the love of her life. And kind of the world that they live in. This is a tragic story a lot of ways, but also a very hopeful and loving story. It is beautifully written. I hope that first section kind of gave you an idea. There are nuggets of that throughout. Now, I will say Zora Neale Hurston is well known for her dialect. So some of the dialogue can be a little bit hard to read if you're not used to it. So I recommend reading it out loud at first if you're struggling with it, kind of getting the cadence down. Because once you do, it becomes very, very easy. But I know that a lot of people, when I read it with them years ago, struggled with sort of the dialect. The story, the writing, this book has been around for a long time, and I think it's an underappreciated modern classic. And I adore it, and I give it to a ton of people. So that's Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. And isn't that cover just gorgeous? Funny story, this is my 11th grade story version, so if you look inside it, you'll see all my underlines to write an 11th grade term paper. <laughs> the second book, and probably one of my favorite writers of all time, is um, No Fond Return of Love by Barbara Pym. Now, I could have picked a lot of Barbara Pym. Excellent Women and Quartet of Autumn are probably her two most famous novels. But when I read Barbara Pym, I really read her for escapism. A lot of people call her the 1950s, 60s, 70s Jane Austen. She's very much a social satirist. She talks about things. There's not a lot of plot to her books, but it's more just about the people. Now, this is the story of Dulce Mainwaring, and I, that's just a name that I can't say. She, at the very, very start of the book, has been abandoned by her fiancé, who has decided he does not want to marry her. So her decision is to go to a conference, and she is one of those people who her job is to read nonfiction and create the appendixes at the end. That's what she does for a living can't get more spinster than that now can you and she um does this and she goes to a conference where she meets her friend violet who her and violet are neighbors and they create a relationship violet is there because she needs to escape as well and then our main male character and i'm uh, i can't say his name a y l w i n 
Alwyn, Alwyn Forbes, doctor. He's there to give a riveting speech about the difficulties, difficulties of being an editor. Um, and their lives intertwine. Violet becomes infatuated with the doctor. Um, Dulce wants to get them together, so more or less starts stalking him, trying to find more and more information about him. He winds up coming to her house for dinner and following, falling in love with her much younger niece and pursuing her. There are neighbors, there is backstory, it is, it is just so much good fun. All of Barbara Pym's novels are very, this, very much the same vein. All of them are kind of, when I need something just to prove to me that writing can just be simple and perfect and good, I read a Barbara Pym novel. So the one I'm chosen to talk to you about is No Fawn Return of Love, but I highly recommend Excellent Women if you haven't read it. I highly recommend Quartet and Autumn if you haven't read that one. And uh, pick them up. They're, they're, they really are amazing. Um, the next book is, if you watched my first video, I talked to you about Mae Sarton and reading her novel, um, The Magnificent Spinster. And I kind of brought up this book, which is As We Are Now. This is a hardback copy that I actually found at a used bookstore. Not the copy I read, but I just think it's so pretty. Now, Mae Sarton um, was a lesbian writer, and she wrote a bunch of nonfiction, too, that is probably more famous than her fiction. But this is what brought me to Mae Sarton, this novel. And this is the story of, I can't forget her name, Caro, and C-A-R-O. And she's had a mishap. She's probably in her late 60s, and she's had an accident, and she needs to recover. And she starts living with her brother and his wife, but it, it doesn't work out. They don't all mesh. So she's put into a home. And in that home, she meets a bunch of different people, but she's also treated pretty horribly by the people who run the home. And all I will say is that she makes a decision to change her circumstances, and it's not what you think she would do. I remember finishing the book and literally saying, what the heck a doodle? Um, I was floored. I couldn't believe it. And it is fantastic. It's so well written. She's an amazing character. And I realize I'm just throwing this book at you like this. So I apologize. But this is As We Are Now by Mae Sarton. And I really, really, really loved it. And I hope more people read it. And I think you should. And Caro will, she'll charm you as well. Okay, two more books to tell you about. This book, oh, it's kind of a hardcover, The Door by Magda Sabo. This is the New York Times um, Review of Books Classics Edition. This book was read by my book club, my online book club, and it was a book I would have never picked up. And it's funny, when I read the reviews of it, I didn't know that I would like it so much, but it is really the story of a relationship between two women a wealthy woman and her husband who are both writers and they hire a maid and her house her name is Emrance and Emrance is this older woman who does everything her own way she's unapologetic about how stubborn she is but when she's taking care of you and when she loves you she has different ways to to say and do it and this book is basically about the psychological relationship she has with the person that's hired her and how controlling she can be and how she punishes people for not doing what they were expected. Now, why is it called The Door? Um, Emerence lives in an apartment that no one has ever been past the door and no one's allowed in. And that is a mystery that our um, main character who's really telling the story wants to solve. And some horrible things happen, and Emerence is, needs to be taken care of herself. And when that happens, it changes the dynamic of her relationship with her employer and kind of her relationship with the entire town who knows who she is. There is a movie where um, Helen Mirren plays Emerence. Now, I haven't seen the movie because I loved the book so dearly, um, but Helen Mirren is perfect as Emerins. So that's The Door by Magda Sabo. It is very dense. I'm just going to let you know. It's not a book that you're going to fly through. It's not a lot of dialogue. Um, but once you're in this world, you won't want to leave. Um, I've bought, they reissued her another book by her and I have it on my shelf and I'm excited to read it. But I really think this needs to be in more people's hands. So that's The Door by Magda Sabo. Okay. 
The last book I'm going to talk to you about came back on my radar because the author has her second book coming out very, very soon. I read this years ago. I can't even remember. When did this book come out? 2014. So it's been three years since I've read this book. This is The Enchanted by Renee Denfield. Now, this book is fantastic in the fact that it is magical. It's magical realism. It is magical in its language. Um, it is the story of two characters. The first character is an unnamed woman whose job it is is when someone is put on death row and she's, they're just about to be executed. Her job is to come in and find something that gets them off of that list. Um, and she comes in because there's a guy who's about to be put to death and she does research. And as she's researching his life to figure out what she can do to get him off, she finds out that he doesn't want to be let off. He, he just wants to die. And she finds out there's a lot of connections between his history and what her history is. The second character that's really important is one of the guys who's on death row and we're in his head and he has created this mythological sort of story about the noises and what goes on. Now they're on solitary confinement. They don't see other people or other inmates. Um, and he, so he's created this whole world in his head and it, it's really magical. And you learn his backstory and why he's there and you like him because of this world he's created, but you realize he's not a likable person. He's actually a horrible person. And she does an amazing job of just creating this juxtaposition between those two ideas. And the main character is, uh, the woman main character, is trying to do this while he is sitting there, our male main character, just getting through life as a prisoner. It changed the way I think about so much about books. Um, you don't need to know who a person is to care about a person. And she does a great job of just making enough information available that your mind just goes places. Um, that's The Enchanted by Renee Denfield, and it is fantastic. And if you haven't picked it up, please read it. It is really, really good. And our second book is coming out, and I am so excited. I, I, can't, I can't wait. So that is four or five books, five books about some women in literature that I absolute, absolutely have loved. And I hope you will pick them up. If you've read them, please, let's talk about them below. If you haven't read them, please buy them. And then let's talk about that. I would love to hear what you have to think. So hope everyone has a great rest of your day. I will talk to you later. And thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.